U.S. stocks opened slightly higher following the all-important employment report. In fact, we hit some intraday highs at the open of trade. 138,000 jobs were created in the month of May versus consensus of 185,000. The employment rate ticked down to 4.3% versus consensus of 4.4%, and that's because of participation rate moved lower. Average hourly earnings, the key of the report, came in at 0.2%, and that was in line with consensus. This set of data is especially important because they are the last significant economic signal ahead of the Fed's meeting June 13th and 14th. We all know about sell in May and go away, but another investing meme quickly growing in popularity is the June swoon. There's some merit to this idea as historically June has been a weak month for equities, and last year's Brexit sell-off is still fresh in investors' minds. In fact, since 1950, only August and September have had worse average monthly returns, while over the past 10 years, only January has been down more on average. But here's the good news. Technicals tell a more upbeat story, according to Ryan Dietrich. He's a senior market strategist at LPL Financial. He says June historically has been a weak month for equities, but the catch is some of the worst drops have taken place when the S&P 500 index was beneath its 200-day moving average. That's a key technical level that chartists look at. When the S&P 500 has been in a bullish trend along this long-term trend line like it is now, June has been higher 59% of the time versus 33% when starting below it. Of course, there's always the overhang of what's happening in Washington, D.C. Despite all of the noise, nothing has really changed with policy in terms of taxes and health care. So there really is no clue in terms of what direction the White House is going. And we're, and we're also essentially in an earnings vacuum into the middle of July. So the focus is going to continue to be on macro. Things could heat up the third week in June when the FOMC will announce its interest rate hike decision on June 14th, and there's a roughly about an 85% chance rates will move higher according to Fed Fund futures. Then on June 16th, we have an important uh, options expiration cycle where we have four different classes of options expiring, and the S&P and Russell indices will rebalance as well. And of course, the close of the second quarter on June 30th, so the back half of the month is really going to be data and volume loaded. From the Nasdaq market site, I'm Jill Malandrino, and this is Africa 54 Business News.